So we've made it known in I don't know how many videos that we're fans of the Portland Trailblazers. And it's basically written into Blazer fan code that you have to hate the Lakers, although Ben apparently didn't get the memo. Unlike Ben though, I, being the good Blazer fan that I am, have never liked the Lakers. They aren't my most hated sports team, that's these fuckers, but they're certainly up there. So keep all that in mind when I say I was so happy to see the Lakers knock the Grizzlies out of the playoffs because this Grizzlies team is absolutely pathetic. Before we talk about the Grizzlies though, if you haven't already, make sure you leave a like on this video, give us a subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. This is probably something we'll dive into in a later video, but I've always found the arcs of certain NBA teams and players interesting. Like how teams go from being loved or at the very least tolerated by the NBA community to being hated. Like I don't think many fans had a problem with the Golden State Warriors when they made their first championship run in 2015, but they kept winning, signed KD, got honestly deservedly cocky, and picked up a whole legion of bandwagon fans, and now they're arguably the most hated team in the NBA. Similarly, look at the Heat in the early 2010s. They signed three of the top 10 players in the NBA in one offseason, which a lot of people saw as creating a super team far beyond any other in the league. Couple that with LeBron's less than optimal way of handling his decision, and a general cockiness in the way they carried themselves, and they were loathed by the NBA community. The Memphis Grizzlies, however, are different from these two teams in one key aspect. Both of those teams won NBA championships championships. That's championships plural. Success breeds contempt. It's the same thing with the Yankees, the Patriots, Real Madrid. If you win a lot, people aren't going to like you. This Grizzlies team though has only made it as far as the conference semifinals and yet they're probably the most hated team in the NBA today. So why? Well, it's because they're just that insufferable. There's a fine line between confidence and arrogance and the Grizzlies have stepped so far beyond that line. Say what you want about Draymond's trash talking or Steph's shimmying or Clay's stupid four ring celebration that he definitely stole from Kobe, by the way. But those guys have proven on multiple occasions that they have the ability to back up their talk. And the Grizzlies aren't the only ones that have had this rep before. The Phoenix Suns had a bit of the same rep last year for being corny and cocky, but at least they won 64 games in the regular season and made the finals the year before. Also, they had the presence of mind to dial it back a whole bunch after being humbled by Luka. The Grizzlies thought, nah, let's keep this up, even though we've won jack shit. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. So let's talk about the Grizzlies. And first of all, Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson, y'all are okay with me. First up, Desmond Bain. Firstly, and this isn't from their playoff series this year, but I feel like it's worth mentioning. Uh, good job pissing off LeBron so much by talking trash that a few minutes later, he threw down a monster dunk on Jaron Jackson. Good job on that one, but that's from last season. So how about a more recent example? Well, when the Grizzlies came to LA to play the Lakers in late January, by the way, this was also the game where Dylan Brooks and Shannon Sharp got into it. And don't worry, we'll get to that. Bain apparently told Sharp, quote, you know this game over. To which Shannon responded that LeBron was either gonna hit a game winning three or the Lakers were gonna win it in overtime. So how did the game actually end? Well, about 10 seconds after guaranteeing a victory, Dennis Schroeder stole the ball from Desmond Bain and hit an and one layup to put the Lakers up for good. And hilariously, it's not the last time Desmond Bain would be wrong after guaranteeing a win. Seriously, it's karmic justice at its finest that Desmond Bain guaranteed the Grizzlies would push the series to a seventh game, only for the Grizzlies to lose by 40 points in game six. Still, at least he showed up to his post-game press conference. So I'll give him that. Now on to John Moran, and he shares a lot of the same trash talking tendencies as Desmond Bain, both on and off the court. There was the now infamous interview where Ja said he was really only worried about the Celtics because he was, quote, Quote, fine in the West, a quote he will probably have to deal with for the rest of his career. But the real problem with Ja this year is what happened off the court. Long story short, Ja had about four separate off the court incidents this season, with the most severe being that he allegedly brought a gun into a Denver nightclub. Ja was suspended eight games for the incident, although he did miss one extra game while preparing to return to the team. And to be fair to Ja, he mostly kept his head down after he returned to the team. And in his post game press conference after game six, he acknowledged that he needed to grow more as a leader and that he was perfectly willing to deal with the crap fans will inevitably give him for the fine in the West comments. He accepted responsibility for his off the court issues and overall, this was a great look for Ja. So I wanna give him credit for that. But then we get to this clown. Look, Dylan Brooks went to Oregon. And for anyone who doesn't know, 
I also went to Oregon. Not only that, but in his senior year at Oregon, he had a crazy buzzer beater to beat second ranked UCLA and help the Ducks reach their first final four since the very first NCAA tournament almost 80 years ago. Also, I not only went to Oregon, but I fucking love Oregon athletics. So the fact that I have fully turned on this guy is really, really telling. But let's count the reasons and oh boy, there's a lot of them. Well, he actually started his antics at Oregon. First in the 2016 NCAA tournament when he hit a deep three when the Ducks had already wrapped up their sweet 16 win against Duke. Although this was mostly ignored because the shot clock was still on and also it was against Duke. And Duke doesn't get to lecture anyone on proper sportsmanship. Then he was back in the headlines the next year when against Utah, he committed a flop so bad that it ended up on Good Morning America. That's impressive. After landing with Memphis in the 2017 draft, Brooks went under the radar for a few years, mostly because the Grizzlies were in the middle of a full-on rebuild. He re-entered the public eye in game two of the 2022 Western Conference semifinals, though, when he caused Gary Payton to take a hard fall that broke his hand with a foul that was at best reckless and at worst dirty. He got tossed for that play and was suspended for game three. In game six, though, he was right back at it, picking up a flagrant one for blatantly shoving Steph, and even after the Grizzlies lost, proceeded to call the Warriors old in his post-game interview. This would bafflingly become a trend. This year, though, Brooks took it to another level, jawing at opponents seemingly every night, getting into it with Shannon Sharp, leading the NBA in technical fouls, those stupid f***ing pregame dances he does, and look, I get what he's trying to do. I'm a wrestling fan, so I can appreciate a good heel, but the best heels are the ones that not only talk, but can back it up too. And Dylan Brooks f***ing sucks. You know that though, if you just watched him in the playoffs. But there was also other stuff outside of just annoying the other team. Like when he pushed a camera person for no reason, like that's a shitty thing to do. In the playoffs though, instead of getting the Warriors like the year prior, the Grizzlies matched up with the Lakers, another older team with championship pedigree. Did he tone down his trash dog now that it's playoff time? Oh, you should know better by now. Talking to the media after the Grizzlies game two win, Brooks called LeBron old, said he pokes bears, and said he doesn't respect anyone until they give him 40. Fun fact, Dylan Brooks' career high is 37, so apparently he doesn't even respect himself. And after the Grizzlies predictably lost games three and four, Brooks skipped media availability. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Look, if you want to talk trash, go for it. But when you talk and your opponent beats you, you can't run away and hide like a little bitch. This is the issue I think most people have with Brooks and the Grizzlies as a whole. They talk a whole lot of shit when they're winning, and then when they lose, they're all butthurt about it. Also doesn't help that while Brooks was doing all this, he was genuinely in contention for the worst player in the NBA playoffs, averaging 10.5 points per game on an anemic 31% shooting from the field and 24% shooting from three, while being a minus 44 while on the court. Also got himself ejected from game three for very obviously hitting LeBron in the dick. The Grizzlies won game five to extend the series, but got curb stomped in game six, losing by exactly 40 points. Oh, karma's the best, isn't it? And did Brooks talk to the media after that shellacking? Lol. Still, at least he showed up to his end of season interview where he doubled down on his antics and said he had no regrets about calling out LeBron. F in hell, man. So going forward, if I'm the Memphis Grizzlies, what would I do? Well, the first thing is pretty easy. You need to shut the f up. This team has in no way earned the right to talk as much trash as they do. And the second thing I'm doing is I am moving heaven and earth to get rid of Dylan Brooks. This team will be fine without him. Hell, they might even be better without him. And I feel like if they want to shed their current image, they don't have a choice but to get rid of him. It's like when the Raptors traded DeMar DeRozan. He was the symbol of that Raptors team that couldn't get past LeBron. And they felt like if they ever wanted to shed that reputation, they had to move on from him. Brooks is now in that position for the Grizzlies. Because when you really look at it, there is no reason this Grizzlies team should be as hated as they are. They're a young, exciting team playing for a franchise that historically doesn't have have a whole lot of success. Look at the Sacramento Kings. Look how popular they are with the NBA community because their players are likable and aren't trash talking to everyone when they haven't won anything. Until this Memphis team grows up though, good luck getting embraced by the broader NBA community because it's just not happening. That's the video, guys. What do you think of the Memphis Grizzlies? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like as it really helps us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.